All right, so we saw the tank yesterday. We saw how the tank works, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got, this is the supply to the pump here. There's also a recirc line that allows you to put, to, to circulate water to kind of test that the pump's working. And there's also probably, this is a fill line that if for some reason we needed to top off the tank. In theory, once this tank is full, this tank is full. I mean, if you determine whatever the level the tank is at occupancy, whatever the amount is, you know, some people like to put a line on here to just kind of, that's where it needs to be full, no, no less than that. This one looks like a line, and then it's a little fuller than that. So more is always fine. It's always okay to have more. So here you see they're using the plastic pipe going into this pump. Um, they may have some valves turned off right now. This That's actually a drain valve that's turned off, but it actually looks like everything is turned on mm -hmm. uh, on the system, and they're keeping a little bit of pressure on the system. You will see at times where they glue this up, there may be a little extra glue on the pipe. Um, it shouldn't be a lot. It shouldn't be get too crazy, but you may see some uh, out there. The inspector's test line, most people do not require something like that, but they may require a drain or some other device just upstream of the alarm so that you can test the alarm to make sure that the alarm works. Um, so here we look above our head. Somewhere we got the supply. This is the this would be considered the bottom of the riser, BOR. That would be considered the top of the riser coming out here. I mean it's you know it's not a traditional sprinkler riser. But if we look up here, you'll see the plastic is joined together. You got one head over there, one head over here. Now how how what size space do you think this is? Somebody who's good with six by ten? You know, so nine, let's just say nine by twelve. Yeah, nine by twelve, six by ten, or whatever. So if it's nine by twelve, let's use nine by twelve, and we put one sprinkler in here, which we could do, right? A single sprinkler. What is the spacing that we should select in the hydraulic calculations for a nine by twelve room? We would select the twelve by twelve spacing, all right? We couldn't select ten by ten because ten by ten isn't going to reach all the way this way. So if we're putting one head in here, you would be looking at the cut sheet for 12 by 12. There would be a flow requirement and a pressure requirement. And then you're gonna be looking for them to translate that or transfer that onto the calculation, right? They shouldn't be picking 10 by 10. They, should, they, they could pick 14 by 14, that would be okay. But they should be calculating at least the 12 by 12 number on the form. Make sense to everybody? Yes. So I got two heads in here. Right, I can cut that down. Do I? What do I cut it down to? With two heads in here, and it's nine by twelve. What should be the minimum spacing that those sprinklers are calculated at? So if they're if it's twelve foot long, and now I'm going to calculate six a foot. six by six. Yeah. But I can't do six by six because it's nine foot wide. Right. So if I do six by six, I'm not getting all the way out, right? So now I'm still going to have to calculate it out of ten by ten. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Now, if that's a sidewall head, and I don't put a sidewall head in there, I'm gonna be looking for the sidewall head that's gotta throw 12, 12 feet all the way down here. Mm -hmm. So that I gotta pick the 12 foot this distance you know, from the cut sheet. Okay. Again, you're not doing the design, you're just reviewing to make sure that that's what they did. And you're looking at the heads, you know, do we have, we have hanger there, we have some hangers on here, this looks okay. Uh, in here, let's let's go over into that room for just a minute. This is all all this stuff is built by apprentices. Here. So, if you ever ever seen the glue? That's the glue. They got the little dab to do on the end there and push it together. Just push it and turn it to make sure that it works. So the only real difference here a little bit is we got some copper piping we still have the, the plastic piping but here we did the copper piping and we're going to show you after lunch about the calculation of the different materials of construction a little bit the plastic piping is just easy to put together um, it has very good flow characteristics there's just it's just a lot of things and it's less expensive so they just use plastic uh, you see some copper but not much all right i haven't figured out how do we get upstairs Upstairs. On this side. Upstairs. Uh, you gotta come outside. All right. Step outside.
and come around and we'll see what's upstairs. I haven't been upstairs. Pick either room, it doesn't matter. Both are the same. So my preference in design, and again, this is just as a designer or whatever, if you guys try and sneak in here a little bit if you can. Um, is to do the sidewall heads like you see against the by the doors where you came in, right? Comes up from the floor below, stays tight to the wall. You get a head there. There's the you know it's an inside wall. The freezing is not an issue, uh, no big deal. And you know this is probably small for a bedroom, obviously. Although I tried to convince my kids that this was perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, being in the career with me, um, but. You know, so now I got to again calculate that head that it's going to reach the far end of the room, whatever the size of the room is. You can do the overhead like this, like you see the overhead on here. Um, I, I just don't like that from a freeze issue, right? It's just too too potential. If the attic's right there, um, that pipe you you can insulate all you want. I don't Most know. Most people have a ceiling fan; they don't usually do. Yeah, right. Correct, right, there's a ceiling fan or something else there. That's why this is better. Um, they were able to do a lot of retrofits in uh, apartments and hotels and that kind of thing with the sidewall head like that. You just shoot a line down the common hallway and just shoot right into each room off the side. Mm -hmm. That was, there's a ton of places that were done that way. Um, and if the, as long as the room's not too deep, where that one head can't get get the thing and you minimize your you know to retrofit that was a good way so so again now you're going to look at the pipe the size of the pipe right the diameter of the pipe it's marked on there somewhere can you guys see on this pipe here what, what does it say it looks like one inch right mm -hmm. right there something's inside you got one inch or is it something smaller than that Right, that's the pressure, I think. Doesn't say pipe diameter on there. You might see it up on that razor, right, right, uh, right up on top there. It's all facing us. Okay, you see one inch on this one. Yeah. All right. So again, you know, you're gonna, you gotta check when you're doing a field work. You gotta go check. You know, it's it's. Does the drawing say one inch? Does it say, you know, inch and a half, inch and a quarter? You got to verify that the proper, you know, pipe is in. So you got to get in and inspect these places before the, it's all drywalled in. Because once it's drywalled in, you'll never see it again. Right? And do your pressure test and that sort of thing. But you know, it's not too complex. Let me just go across the hallway for a minute, see if there's anything different to see over there. Really well, this is showing the slope ceiling here. You can see a little more of the spacing, maybe a little closer together. And they actually put the walls in here so you can see what the finished the finished look of the uh, the wall on the step out so that you guys can see what the finished look is. But we got the hallway covered, they got the rooms covered. It's not much to it, folks. There's, there's really not a lot to it. And and that's kind of the deal. Now, the older apartment building, something like retrofit, sometimes you'll see this. You see what these guys did here, where they have to put the exposed pipe in the hallway. I think downstairs, if you go back and look in the hallway downstairs, they have like a deco shield stuff that they can clip onto this that kind of hides it uh, from, from the piping. Um, I don't know what the experience long term of that is, if that gets torn down or whatever. But uh, again, that place in. Indonesia, this was sort of the concept that we used. We hid stuff in, and I asked them, what can you get there 
for uh, materials to, to put on there. We talked about plastic and they said, we got guys here that can weld stainless steel like nobody's business. And I said, fine, let's, cause it had to be an ultra clean area. I said, fine, just make this out of stainless steel, glue or caulk it at the top and the bottom. Cause they couldn't have the pipe cause dust could build up on the top of the pipe and get into the product they were making below. So everything had to be clean in that area. So it was a weird kind of design, something unusual, but uh, good big Johnson & Johnson was sort of a big food pharmaceutical company I'd done a lot of work for. And they asked me specifically to come up with something for them there. So this is it. I mean, there's not, um, you know, there's not a lot to it. It's the spacing of the heads, the size of the piping. We'll show you after lunch a little bit about the calculations. Um, but it's kind of simple with the two head design. You know, it's 13 to 20 gallon a minute. And, you know, this gets, gets put in here. The only thing to worry about, and I know I, when I said this to somebody the other day, they, yesterday, they said, oh yeah, I've had the same thing. It's the, these lines that go up the side while people want to put a picture. And, uh, I just, I just, yeah, we yeah drilling, you know, a neighbor called me. I just drilled through the line. I'm like, I'll oh, keep the drill in there and go downstairs and shut the valve and <laughs> drain it off. And you got to get somebody to fix that. So, you did that right to a brand new, uh, Brand new house. Yeah, I mean, if if you know, think about that, right? So we got at least three people here that have that experience. If you can get the sidewall head to be where they install it, to be in line with the pipe, then you can at least advise people when they're moving in. Say, see where that line? You know, the the pipe is right there. Just go a foot on either side of it, and you're fine. Oh, I want to put the picture. It's right there. No, ah, find some better place to put. It. So. Are you going to go over testing? Here? Testing a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. So hydrostatic testing. Yes. We do, you know, two hours, two hundred feet yeah. total. I actually had a guy who wanted to just do the air and no yeah, water. Gotta really, there, you got to read this, what the code says about air pressure testing. Air pressure testing is only like if you couldn't get water. There's, you got to be careful putting stuff on the air. Make up, steal but it from the neighbor. You cause, you cause, you cause danger. There's some danger to that uh, because of the, it's a compressible. Water's not a compressible fluid. So, uh, you know, when when you know when you when you open a open that valve, right? You get it like, a, and it's done, right? But on air, you're going to get a lot of air coming out. Very. I, I saw a guy hit. They were doing a pipe plug, big, big diameter pipe plug. Uh, and uh, on a drain line, and they were air pressure testing, and that thing came out and took his legs out from him. He was hurt pretty bad. We had like a technical rescue to go get this guy out of a big detention basin one day. So, you know, I was like, they were doing air testing. Like, it says right there, be careful doing air. So, if you're testing your fire hose, there's all kind of requirements related to the same issue. All right?